Hello everyone. So, today I am going to answer questions that I get all the time on the difference between chatterbaits, swim jigs, spinnerbaits, questions that people ask all the time on when to throw each one, how to how they're fished differently, um, and just other things, trailers and things like that, what kind of blades, colors, all that stuff. So I'm just going to go through it all real quick. First, let's talk about the chatterbait. The chatterbait is great for going through grass. Better than the other two, hands down by far. Um, a chatterbait with this blade chops that grass, moves that grass, comes through the grass so much better. It is literally the best moving bait for grass. Really, a chatterbait can kind of be fished everywhere, but it's awesome for grass specifically. Um, if you're fishing laydowns, uh, brush piles, things like that, a chatterbait is not great. Okay, and the reason why is this blade hits that, hits the wood, and ends up taking it off and it will get caught in this blade you get snagged really easy in those sticks or it shoots it off and drives the hook right into that piece of wood um, so that is where a chatterbait just isn't great um, rocks also not fantastic in rocks the blade likes to slide in under those rocks kind of the same scenario um, amazing for grass okay like I said it's the best grass fishing bait um, but around wood cover, some sorts, uh, like I said, lay downs, brush piles, trees, standing timber, you know, things like that. Chatterbait isn't the best for that. And that is when a swim jig really comes into play. Okay. A swim jig is awesome around, Jesus, awesome around sticks. Um, those lay downs, those trees, those brush piles, those sorts of things. They're awesome for swimming this jig through there because of the weed guard. That weed guard really does help to get it through the sticks a lot better. So those are the two major differences that I find in fishing a chatterbait or a swim jig. Sometimes also a swim jig, um, just that more subtle action obviously sometimes is what they want. But really the big thing that determines whether I'm going to throw a chatterbait compared to a swim jig is the cover. Um, heavy grass, a swim jig, it tends to grab the grass and get caught in the grass a lot worse than the chatter with that blade that just chops through that grass. But then when there's sticks or rocks even, the swim jig is the way to go. It, without that blade, to get caught on those sticks or the rocks, things like that, it comes through that sort of cover so much better. So if it sticks, the swim jig. If it's grass, the bladed jig. Alright, now let's kind of look at the spinnerbait, okay? Spinnerbait, I really love spinnerbaits for the same thing as a swim jig. So, like I said, throwing around that hard cover the trees, the sticks, the brush piles, the rocks. I don't like that chatterbait because it gets hung up. A spinnerbait will be able to give you that blade, that more thump, sort of, but it bounces off sticks and rocks so much better than a bladed jig, obviously. Um, and also, this is more of a subtle presentation. It doesn't have a thump of a blade or a flash of a blade. So if you want that flash, dirtier water, things like that, where you want that flash or that thump, that is when a spinnerbait really comes into play. But especially on rocks for me. All right, rock dams especially, um, riprap, those chunky rocks, spinnerbait is the way to go. That thing, I mean, very rarely is it going to slide under a rock. And if it does, it will usually pop right out. Um, it, most of the time, it just bounces right off those rocks gives a crazy flash bouncing off those rocks 
and get you them bites. Actually, another thing too um, with the chatterbait is fishing deep, like 20 feet or really deeper than 10 feet. A chatterbait kind of sucks for fishing deeper, um, unless if it's thick grass, it's easier to keep it down. But the problem with chatterbait and the blade is it has a tendency to just want to come up um, instead of staying on the bottom. But really, a lot of times when I'm fishing deeper, I want to maintain bottom contact, contact with the cover down there. Um, and so a chatterbait, really, like I said, once you get down to like 20 feet, even over 10 sometimes, um, I usually don't fish it over 10 feet very often. I still might, but anything over that, it just wants to come up. It's a lot easier to slow roll a spinnerbait on the bottom. Uh, it usually just has a better tendency to stay down if you just slowly reel it. Or, that's when the swim jig comes back into play. Swim jig will just maintain bottom contact, just go right through the bottom, you can just slow roll it through that stuff. Um, that's really a great technique. So I'm definitely going to go with the swim jig or the spinnerbait in deeper water if I'm fishing those style baits. So those are the sort of situations where I'm deciding on throwing one bait over another. Okay, Those are the situations where each of these baits shine. Um, so let's get into retrieves. Chatterbait. Talked about it so many times. Slowly reel it. Um, but really a chatterbait can be used at any speed I just tend to find going through the grass, slow rolling it, still with that blade chattering, but as slow as you can fish it with that blade chattering, you can fill it in the rod tip of it chattering, and then just ripping it out of the grass when you start catching grass. That is how I fish a chatterbait most of the time. Same with a swim jig, really. A swim jig, I like to also just reel pretty slow. Steady retrieve, just slow. You know, all these I'm throwing on six to one gear ratio reels. Um, nothing faster. Six to one is the perfect reel speed for all these techniques. Steady, slower retrieve just works. Um, so that is that one. Now a spinner bait, on the other hand, is faster. A spinner bait. I want to keep it above the fish's eye level. Um, these other ones, I want to maintain bottom contact. I want to rip it through those reeds, bounce it off those sticks, whatever. Lower in the bottom, or let it fall, you know, things like that. But spinnerbait, you kind of just throw it out there and reel it. Keep it towards the top of the water column a lot. Um, but that's also not every time. There's so many different ways to really fish all these, but. I'm just telling you kind of things that I've discovered and the ways that I really like to use them. So, um, yeah, fast retrieve, like this speed right here. Keep it towards the top. It doesn't have to be a top water. It doesn't, but, you know, just a couple feet down, whatever, depending on where you're at, obviously, in your water depth. But I want to keep it above the fish's eye level. Um, that's just when it really seems to work. Look up, they see it, they see the flash of that blade. Don't quite know what it is but just reaction strike unless if I'm throwing it deeper okay like I talked about the deep water and how chatterbait just wants to come up and the swim jig is great because it'll stay down same with the spinnerbait you just slow roll it on the bottom um, that's when I'm gonna slow that reel down and just keep it towards the bottom that'll keep that spinnerbait down and not want it to come up um, the thing with the chatterbait the reason why you can't really like super slow it down in the deeper water it still wants to come up and also the deeper water that blade doesn't seem to catch it doesn't seem to kick as well it just doesn't work as great it, it, it just really doesn't I've tried it millions of times it's one of those things where it's just you figure it out now let's go to types of baits um, yeah I'll kind of talk about brands whatever uh, colors and trailers Chatterbaits, my favorite are the 
Chatterbait Customs from Tackle Warehouse just because they're a lot like the jackhammers and not near as expensive. Okay, <laughs> that's it. But jackhammers are great too. Um, I really just like either of those two. Um, but really, any Chatterbait is great. Okay? Uh, other companies make some bladed jigs, whatever. They don't, they're not as good as a Chatterbait. They're just not. Really, you can use any of them. I still throw originals, whatever. Um, I like originals too. They have so many different kinds now, it's funny. Grab you one, throw it. Alright? You can just buy one of the cheap originals that they got at Bass Pro Shops or wherever you shop. They're everywhere. Um, or you can go to Tackle Warehouse and get the customs. They're only a couple dollars more than the originals, and I just like them a little bit better. Line ties better, heads better on them, and the bait keeper, the trailer keeper, is so much better. These wire keepers are the best keepers by far. Um, so, yeah, those are the kinds. Chatterbaits. Now, colors. Green pumpkin. No. Um, colors with all these. Stick with what you're imitating. Okay? And that goes for everything. Um, crazy colors are crazy colors. They're just to get you to buy them. Okay? They really are. I, I've said this so many times. Crazy colors catch fishermen. They don't catch fish. Okay? You can throw pretty much anything out there. Now, subtle color differences, that makes a difference. But when you're getting into all these crazy, spastic, goofy colors, that crap don't matter, okay? Green pumpkin on a chatterbait, or a white chatterbait, if I'm fishing it for shad, or not for shad, but if shad is the main food source, uh, white chatterbait seems to work great, um, but still, green pumpkin still works in those lakes really well as well. Um, water, super dirty. Maybe black and blue. Those are the only three colors. That's really all you need. I throw some other crazy colors too here and there. Um, but green pumpkin is going to imitate bluegill, perch, um, crawfish, really the main color, but also white or black and blue. You can go that route. All right, as far as swim jigs, same exact thing. Okay. Uh, these... Swim jigs, I talked about them in a video last week or two weeks ago um, where I talked about all different jigs that I use and brands and all that, but these are the Six Cents uh, swim jigs and I like them a lot. So, but, you know, there's also some other really good swim jigs out there. Ones that I also really, really like are um, made by Bravarni Baits, which is probably a company you've never heard of. Um, which is up north, uh, so it's more of like a finesse style swim jig, but they're not completely, you can get them in any size. Um, but Bro Varney Baits, I'll probably put a link down there. Their stuff's really awesome. Um, I just didn't have any in that box that I grabbed out of the boat, so, um, they're in the other box, but anyway, they're freaking phenomenal, beautiful swim jigs as well. I actually really, really like those as well. It's the same thing, okay? This is like their kind of, their bluegill color, whatever, because they, it's six cents. I mean, all their colors are kind of crazy. They are one of those companies that make crazy colors. Okay. Yeah. But I like their stuff. It just, other than the crazy colors, it's not just crazy colors. They actually make good stuff with good action and good quality. So, um, but so it's but it's really just like a green pumpkin all right that's to imitate those bluegill those perch like i talked about crawfish as well um so that color or a white some version of white this is like the sexy shad sort of color i don't know the sexified shad they, they call it or whatever spinnerbaits i talked about this being a lucky craft something another um yeah, like Skeet Reese, Lucky Craft, Spinnerbait, you can tell this thing's just been bouncing off rocks all the time. Um, like I said, I love throwing a spinnerbait along rocks. So, but this one, these are great. Um, like I said, that blade, they're a little smaller of a profile than I really, really like, and the hook 
is a little smaller. Um, so, you know, I mean, they're not my favorites, so, to be honest. Uh, I just grabbed them. Um, here's a awesome one. I love these. This is more of, for deeper, that slow roll in the deep stuff sort of spinnerbait that I was talking about. And this is a Nichols. Um, it is a big girl. It's a three quarter ounce, um, which I'll get into sizes too in a second, I guess. Um, but that big thick head on there, even the half ounce, thick wire, big head. Um, they're great for slow rolling. They're great for everything, but slow rolling, really nice. Um, but yeah, this thing comes off sticks really well. It's a great blade. It's pretty much the same thing. This is like a uh, bluegill color they make, whatever. Um, and so, like, this is a bluegill color, and this is the Lucky Craft bluegill color in that one. So, um, but these are just the ones that I grabbed. But spinnerbaits are different, okay, as far as colors. The bluegill sort of colors, great, fine, whatever. Um, but really, the colors that I like a lot are black or white. So, yeah, uh... Spinnerbait's a little different. I really just like black or white. Um, if I'm fishing for fish targeting shad in a shad lake, fish are feeding on shad, white. Okay. Um, and then if the main food source in a lake is bluegill, though, I like a black. I don't know, and the black just seems to work really good for that for some reason. Darker color really is what I'm getting at um, if it's a bluegill sort of thing the spinnerbait because it's moving faster You know, you're kind of moving it faster. It's either dark or light Really is the way that I see it um, as far as blade goes a Gold blade is going to be better in clear water and A silver blade is going to be better in dirtier water is the common thought process. Me personally, I like silver blades most of the time. Um, just that extra flash, I don't necessarily care what the water color is. That extra flash, just I just like it more. So um, I do throw some gold blades every once in a while, but really if I have to pick, I'm grabbing a silver bladed spinnerbait out of the box. Um, another spinnerbaits that I really like are the Booyah spinnerbaits. Um, that's what I was kind of hoping to find. Uh, just single Colorado blade. So for me, really, just Colorado blades. I just like them. That thump, all of that, I just find them to always work. So um, I don't get too crazy on blades. Those are all the colors. Now, trailers. Chatterbait trailers, talked about this a lot, I didn't grab just a trailer by itself, but this is actually what I throw on a chatterbait all the time, this is obviously on the spinnerbait, whatever, um, I just didn't grab one of these, but a paddle tail swim bait on a chatterbait, that crazy rolling action of that paddle bait, or paddle tail swim bait, just pairs great with a chatterbait, sometimes though, with a paddle tail trailer, on a chatterbait, it seems to be counterintuitive against the blade. Um, both of them kicking back and forth, it can, it just sometimes will seem like it'll throw off the rhythm, uh, or, or it'll cause that blade to not move at all, get it all out of whack. For more subtle action, and this is actually pretty much what I use now almost exclusively. Like this year I haven't even really been throwing a paddle tail on my chatterbaits. I've been throwing the red beard bass and baits crazy beaver on the back. Um, and I just put it sideways. I've talked about this in videos. Clip off like just two ribs down. Seems to be perfect. Put it on that way. And then I pull these little armies off. You don't necessarily have to, but I do just to make sure that they don't screw around with the skirt. Now this is my flipping bait that I make. 
flipping and punching bait, but I've also found it to be a great chatter bait and swim jig trailer. Um, so that's just something that I have found and I really like it. So actually I use this bait a lot for trailers for both of those. But like I said, I thread it sideways. I like that tail going the same way as the hook. So it's kind of more got this action like a fish. Unless I'm really kind of using it more as a crawfish type thing. If I know they're zooming in on crawfish, then I'll go the regular way you put it on a jig. You know, with that tail more down, more crawfish pincher looking style. So that's really what I've been using as a trailer almost ex like exclusively this year actually that I also like for a very subtle action just little leg kick this is another red beard bass and baits um, this is the real gill um, this is the little real gill four inch swim bait uh, the swim bait is awesome just as a swim bait uh, jig head on it hook on top just regular whatever this sucker is awesome little subtle action swim bait um but it seems to really work good on a chatterbait put it to the top um actually it's the same thing if the tail's sticking off too long which it typically does then just pinch a little bit off the top um i usually just cut these because these are thick look look at that uh, yeah um just cut off his head poor little fish um, and do that and then also to make sure it doesn't mess with the skirt rip that off as well so for more of a subtle action that's actually I've been doing this a lot as well so this is the now a butchered red beard bass and baits real gill but go check them out uh, it's an awesome swim bait just as it is um, but yeah that actually works pretty dang good as a chatterbait trailer and also as a swim jig trailer so got a theme here <laughs> I use all the same trailers on all of these okay paddle tail swim bait good hard thump I use them on everything okay good hard thump crazy action on it if you want that crazier action more subtle action but still good flapping of that tail it is like a beaver style bait, okay? Or a flipping bait, a bait like this, okay? Red beard bass and baits. Crazy beaver. Alright? But a bait like that. For a real subtle action with good amount of tail kick, but not crazy where it's throwing water all over the place, maybe clear water, things like that. A bait like this, okay? There's also other ones out there like Yamamoto kind of makes one with a tail kind of like this, a Zeko or whatever, which I think is specifically as a chatterbait trailer um that's it's pretty much like this a lot actually um so you know red beard bass baits but uh so those three really are what i'm using on all of these now here's the deal with a spinnerbait <clears throat> if i want to keep get the bait down further slow rolling it i like to use a trailer if i'm flipping it around sticks I also kind of like a trailer, okay? Um, but around rocks and things, a trailer hook, okay? Um, and here's the reasons why, okay? I kind of always like putting a trailer hook on a spinnerbait. It's just when they're coming for a spinnerbait, it's moving faster. They're coming from behind. They always seem to miss the hook a lot, or this blade kind of gets in the way. So a trailer hook can really help on a spinnerbait. I never put a trailer hook on anything else. Okay, the swim jig, the chatterbait, you do not need trailer hooks for them. Um, just the way they're made, they engulf them. Okay, these, just the way they move, the way they wobble, with that blade kind of in the way, um, trailer hooks are a great option for a spinnerbait. But the reason I don't like using them around sticks is that's another hook to get caught in the sticks. And that one isn't protected by the blade, like I said. Uh, was talking about the blade. Okay, with it back here, that trailer hook tim, tends to kind of move as well, obviously, the way it's on there. 
and it tends to hook into the sticks a lot better. So around sticks and stuff, instead I like to throw a trailer on them. Um, this trailer is actually a little too long, but uh, that is really when I like a trailer. But around rocks, um, even deeper, the point of actually putting a trailer when it's deeper is number one, if you're fishing slower, so trailer hook might not necessarily need to come into play. But also, this trailer helps keep that bait down. Um, but what I'll do for those deeper sort of slow rolling techniques is I will put a trailer on there and a trailer hook. Trailer hook just laying on top of the trailer. That seems to work really well. So, um, but if it's deeper sticks and things, maybe not because that trailer hook has a tendency to catch those sticks. The trailer hooks that I use are, um, you can find them pretty much anywhere. They already come with a rubber around the eye. They're from VMC. They're specifically for chat or uh, spinnerbait trailer hooks. They already come. You don't have to do the little tubing thing. Get it, try to get it on there. It's literally just a rubber piece. You just pull the eye of the trailer hook over your normal hook through the rubber, and then just put it down. And they stay really well. And that's so that's what I use. And they're pretty inexpensive. Anyway, that's pretty much it, and I kind of rambled on, but that was kind of the point, is to get everything in there, because so many people ask me all the time, when do you throw a swim jig instead of a chatterbait? Or when do you throw a spinnerbait instead of a chatterbait? They're all different baits, okay? I'm just throwing that all out there right now. They're all different baits. Do not put them all together. Um, they're actually quite a bit different. Um, they all look the same, and everyone thinks of them as the same really not. That's it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.